everybody. Back at the end of 2020, some difficult and dark days, I was contacted through her mother and an email, um, contacted by a young lady, a 12 year old school girl called Scarlett. And she had a school project in which she had to examine and look at the work of two artists, one from the 20th century and one from the 21st century. Now the 20th century artist that she picked was Henry Moore. And there happened to be a Henry Moore sculpture at the school just up the road from her uh, in Old Stevenage. And uh, the other artist that she chose was me. Um, and the piece that she chose was a piece uh, called a Boris. Oh, excuse me for a minute. Oh, itchy nose. Um, so I was deeply flattered, obviously. And I don't think little Scarlet realised that... Um, just what it meant to me to be honest when you were writing songs and you're in a little band for someone to go to the effort to learn one of your songs and perform it is really a big high point as a writer and as an artist it's exactly the same really that if someone takes an interest in your work and uh, interest to the point where they actually want to do a copy of your work even if it's a 12 year old school girl it means a great deal it really really does so I said I would make this YouTube film. I'm sorry it's taken two years, Scarlett. Um, and I've only found the time to do it now because I've got COVID. I managed to duck and weave it all this time, but um, I haven't escaped it at all. So I'm just starting to get the right side of it. The headaches aren't quite so bad now. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to thank you, Scarlett, for making a high point at the end of my 2020. And I hope your project went really well. I hope you're still doing uh, craft technology. And um, I will go through all the pictures in a minute with the, um, in fact, uh, let's do it now. So here we are. Here's the Henry Moore that we was on about earlier. And it's called the Family Group. And this is in Old Stevenage, up in Herefordshire. So it's a sculpture that you can actually know quite well. And it's, in fact, like a lot of Henry Moore's work, is quite spectacular. It must have been quite shocking when it was first seen. But I, I like it as well. So we've both got the similar takes there. And the work she's chosen me was a thing I call Boris. Now, I've done a series of these uh, particular sculptures, so it's not the only Boris in the world, but this was kind of the first one I was proud of. And I'll make a description on how I make it. I'll shut up now for a minute. Yeah, this is the type of machine that produces an awful lot of interesting uh, scrap materials for me. It's a sort of a universal cutter, puncher, um, press, whatever you'd like to call it. You can use this for multiple reasons. A fantastic machine. As you see, it's got some really good chopping devices to chop all sorts of materials, uh, specialising in angle iron and flat, and, and then a punch this end, all running off the same motor. How clever is that machine there? Look. Yeah. Right, this sort of machine would produce an awful lot of punchings. There's not a lot of punchings underneath this one today, but he's been cutting some, hasn't he? So, part of Scarlett's project was to um, ask, obviously, some questions about the piece and how it was made, is most importantly. Now, um, I've just been talking about a machine back there, which gives me lots of offcuts, and it's offcuts that I make these things from, and leftover bits of brass from larger projects. So, to begin with then, I, I've um, just showing here how I made the glasses, which was under a fly press. Which is a very interesting machine in itself with a ball that I put in it and a bit of a donut that I squash it through and I basically bounce that through there until I start to get a bit of shape to it and uh, I might have a pair of old sunglasses laid about that I'm using as a bit of a pattern obviously and then it's a case of working my way a brass is very easy to polish but I still work my way through a number of grades 
and I'll start at an 80 grit to get the big scratches out on a big buffy wheel type machine and then work my way down through a number of grades so the grain on the paper or the discs that I'm using is getting finer and finer and finer until I can get it up to buff mirror polished and when I've got it at that stage keep it in mind I've made some fixing holes somewhere or a way of fixing it to the main frame of a um, a mild steel framework which I then MIG weld over the top and the nose will be a bit around and a couple of ball bearings and lots of MIG weld and you have to look up a MIG welding machine if you don't know what one is and I basically pull a trigger and out comes some CO2 gas to get rid of the oxygen because you don't want oxygen in the atmosphere when I'm welding and a steel rod that's being continuously fed all the time with fingers on the trigger and when it hits earth it'll go molten so I'm MIG welding, I'm actually welding, I'm making both parties molten and it's introducing new rods so it's making a build up and that's where you can actually see the runs of weld when I'm doing the beards and the moustaches and stuff. I think using brass for the glasses also looks quite good but I also use stainless steel and things as well and I can heat treat stainless steel to get all sorts of wonderful colours, you know, blues and um, uh, golds and things, even mould steel will polish up lovely. I mean, I do draw and paint as well, but it's the sculpting that I've really developed. Um, as I get older, I shall do more drawing and painting, or if I have any illnesses, which I have been. Oh, and I wanted to show uh, Scarlet's work as well. So here we are. Here's Scarlet's bit of work. Old pair of dark glasses, an old mask laying about, some Rice Krispies, some sort of craft glue. I'm not too sure if that was that or super glue on a framework of, I assume, cardboard of some kind. And she's come up with her own uh, Boris, copy for mine. So thank you for that. It really uh, made a highlight at the end of a very dark year for a lot of us. We lost a friend through COVID. And as I said earlier, I've got COVID myself now. Um, so yeah, um, it really was. I'm sorry this is taking so long. Uh, thank you, Mum. We're going to get out of the way and using their email address. I hope you're doing well at school. You're 14 now. I hope you're taking the old um, design technology still. And uh, I hope the studies are going well. So good luck for the future and all your friends. Thank you very, very much for your interest. And I, again, I apologise for this taking two years. <laughs> but uh, I really have been busy. So thank you now. Have a nice life and uh, look after yourself. Ta-da.